Hi guys, welcome to another Flutter tutorial looking at things to consider when creating production ready apps. In this video, we will be looking at how we can evaluate our Flutter packages when we are choosing those packages to use in our apps. There are thousands of Flutter packages available and it's important depending on what you're trying to accomplish to have some kind of standards by which we evaluate those packages that we use. If you are only developing for a prototype, then evaluating packages might not be as important. But if you are creating an app on which your business will be built, then it's of utmost importance that you evaluate what packages you use, since this can have adverse effects on your business if you use any packages without some kind of standard by which you evaluate those packages. My rule of thumb is to use as little third-party libraries as possible. If something is supported out of the box, then consider carefully why you are opting to use a package instead. But if I'm choosing to use a package, here are three places of information that I normally look when deciding on a package to use. So the first place that I normally look, which is the obvious of course, is pub.dev. And this is where we get our packages and the information that is there that will help us decide whether or not this package is the right package for us. So I'm gonna search for a package here and I'm gonna use a popular package, the Flutter block library. So if I bring that up, the Flutter block library here, immediately we can see some information that helps us decide whether or not this is right for us. We have the description here of the package, giving us information as to the purpose of that package. But if we select the package more, some of the things that I generally look for or pay attention to here on the pov.dev site is the scores. So when we look at the scores, we get an understanding of how well this package is designed, how much it's been used in the Flutter community. I also tend to look at this little tick right here. And this little tick right here represents, as you can see, if I'm trying to get the thing to show up right, that this author, this person is a verified publisher. So I know that I can somewhat trust the developers behind this package as they are verified by Google. It, Google. And if we look at the other information here, we can see that this package passes all the categories that Google analyzes for when, when a developer uploads a package. Uh, it, it uses the PANA library to run various analysis and offer scores to the package depending on different categories or criteria. So I know everything here is, is good and this package passes all the static analysis in terms of warnings, lints and formatting. Another place that I look also is here, you can see that this person is a Flutter favorite. So that's important. This is something that is offered by Google to show that this person is contributing largely to the Flutter community in terms of developing packages and their package is widely used by others. Another thing that we can look at here is the documentation. And if I should click there, you can see that the developers behind this package has provided a robust documentation and therefore I can have confidence in, in, in this package that 
it will be safe, it will be secure, and that the developers will have some kind of investment in, in this package over the long haul. And that is very important when you're choosing package because you do not want a package that will no longer be supported in the next few months because the developers decided not to maintain it any longer. So the fact that we have this well put together documentation is an indication of the seriousness and the commitment of the developers to this package. So if we go back here, again, you can look at the API reference and you can also look at the dependencies here. And this package depends on the block library from the same developer and also the provider package. So I know that these dependencies are robust and stable. So this is the first place that I know that we look for information and see how well this package is. And as you, again, you can see this package is have the latest Flutter version and is running the latest Dart version. And that is why it's null safety. So the next layer or the next place that I normally look for information now is inside the GitHub repository. And inside the GitHub repository, you can look for important information with these tags right here. As you can see, this package has a code coverage of 100%. That gives me confidence to say that the developers know what they are doing, they have tested the package, and this package has a good coverage of tests in it. As you can see, you can look at the stars, you can see that it's, it's, it's well liked. And if we check the stars further up here, you can see that it's well liked and others has, have forked it. Also, the next place that I look here on GitHub is for the issues. So I would generally check what's going on with the issues because you might just encounter an issue here that will not work with your application depending on what you're trying to accomplish. So I tend to scroll through some of the issues, uh, look at a couple of them, and to see if there's any kind of dialogue on that particular issue and what that issue is about. So it's important to look at the issues. And if it's a package that is pleated with a lot of issues, then you might want to think twice before you use that package in your application. Again, I am speaking about production ready apps. If, if this is an app that, that your build, business will be built on, then it is important that you evaluate these things because one bad package can cause you millions of dollars. Uh, it can be a case where there's a security flaw in the package that you did not look for, you did not check about that. And depending on whether the package is tightly coupled in your application, especially if it is a part of the business logic, then it might be a headache to remove that, to that package and the references to it. If you have written your application in such a way that it is tightly coupled or have strong dependence on that particular package. Also, I generally tend to look at the maintainers here, the contributors for this package. As you can see, we have 128 contributors here. That's a lot of contributors. So it seems as though people are actually working on it, contributing to it. We have also that this project is sponsored by Felix Angelov, I think he is the creator of the package and we have different sponsors. So again, these are telltale signs that this is a good package that I can have confidence in using. And again, we have more sponsors here, Stream, Very Good Ventures, um, that kind of thing. And again, the documentation is really good. So this is the second layer 
that I normally look at when I am evaluating packages. And the third layer would be a part of the code in the package itself and not how the code is written, but to look if the package is dependent on any other libraries. And let me demonstrate this with one of the packages that I normally use in my application. So if I should quickly go back to PubSpec here. I generally use this package SQF Lite for caching or accessing the local SQLite database on the device. So if I should select this package, immediately you can see here that this package, even though I use it, the confidence is not so high as you can see that the code coverage is in the red zone, it's 57%. And for some reason, it says that the build is failing. I'm not sure why the, their build, recent build seems to be failing. But for this package, let me go to the GitHub repository and show the third layer that I normally look at. So if I go to the SQF Lite folder here into the iOS library, I generally look here in the, 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 the pod spec because the thing is there are times when we are using a package, but that package depends on other packages, whether it is CocoaPods or or build Gradle uh, packages since it will be split into both Android and iOS. And if it's the web, who knows, it might be referencing some other NPM packages that you do not know about. So I generally tend to go into the PubSpec YAML file for iOS and look for dependencies. As you can see here, it has two dependencies. It depends on Flutter, which is obvious since it's a Flutter plugin. And there's the dependency on FMDB. Now, I do not know what FMDB is, but I can research it. I can look what FMDB is. And I think it's uh, another library on top of SQLite for iOS. So you could go to CocoaPods.com. I won't do it, but here you could go to CocoaPods.com and you could search for this package, FMDB, and then you would see that package. So I generally look here also to see what sort of other dependencies, what sort of other pods that this package or plugin depends on. Also, I tend to look at what platform this plugin or package supports. Because again, you do not want to use a package that the package says, okay, I support iOS 9 upwards, but your application is supporting from iOS 14. Who knows? So these are information that you want to look at before you also decide on whether this package is right for you. So if we go back, we can also look at the Android side of things in the build Gradle file and look at the dependencies. And as you can see, there's really no dependency here. This is just um, JUnit for testing, but it would seem for Android, the native SQLite database um, SDK is used on the Android side of things, but on the iOS side of things, there's extra uh, CocoaPods used. So it's a very important that we look at these things. Again, if we are thinking about establishing our business and using certain packages to do that. And so that's basically it for this video. These are the three layers of information that I generally look at when I'm deciding on a package. The first one being pub.dev, the information that we get here. The other one being the GitHub page, looking at the maintainers, looking at the issues relating to the package. And thirdly, looking at the, the Gradle file 
or the pod spec file for that package or plugin to see if there's any dependence on any other Cocoa Pods or any other Gradle files that might pose a risk also to my business if there is any problem there. So I thank you guys again for tuning in to this video. Hopefully, hopefully you find it useful and learn something from it. And I just want to say that one of my subscribers reached out to me and said that, hey, I really appreciate what you're doing. Um, if you could set up a buy me a coffee page that we who really enjoy what you're doing could support you. So I have set up a buy me a coffee page and the link is in the description for if any of you guys decided that you appreciate what is happening here and want to buy me a coffee. So that's there. So thank you again, guys, and see you in the next video.